Hello and welcome. Uh, in this video, I'm going to do a tutorial about how to create a slit scan effect in JavaScript in the browser using the P5.js framework. So first, what is a slit scan? So slit scan is a particular kind of effect that plays with the idea of time in video in an interesting way. It's been used throughout history in photography, film, art, visual art, computational design. It's a, it's a bit of a trope, so to speak, a cliche maybe even. And if you're interested in that, I would point you towards this online catalog by Goal on Levin about slit scanning uh, throughout history. I'm going to set that aside and really just focus on the technique itself and how to program it here in this video. You can see it running right now, the effect. So let's talk about what it's doing. So there is an image in the front coming from the camera. You can't see the camera, but there's a camera here pointing at me. And what slit scanning does is it takes one column of pixels, a uh, and copies them over and over again into this image next to each other. So you see this strange sort of thing. You know what I think might help? A diagram. <laughs> Let's come over here to the whiteboard. So the slit scanning effect takes a video source, and this could be from a live camera, it could be from a recorded movie file, any number of ways, an animation, something that happens over time frame by frame. It requires some sort of canvas, right? A place where that slit scan effect is going to be rendered. And what happens is the slit scanning algorithm goes like this. Take a single column of pixels. So one column of pixels. You could do it from anywhere. The left side, the right side, over here, over here. But let's say from the center. Take that single column of pixels and copy it to the canvas. The next moment of time, there's a new frame of video. Take that same column of pixels and copy it next to that one. Do it again. Take that same column of pixels and copy it next to that one. Over and over and over again. So moments in time, slices of video are put next to each other in sequence on the canvas. Let's go back and look at this one more time and you can see how that's happening. Let's say I stand here and I stand very, 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 very still. You can see the same column of pixels with some slight variation around where my lips are happening over and over again. Now, if I move to the side at about the speed of <laughs> the camera, you can see a speed of the slit scan, so to speak. You can see my image starting to resolve. If I do strange, like, break dancing <laughs> in front of it, you can see alien weird forms happening. Okay, so I'll let you play with this on your own after you programmed it. Let's actually program and make it happen now. So this is actually a, a version of the slit scanning. <laughs> this is actually a version of the slit scanning algorithm running in processing, and I have a video that does exactly this in processing. But I'm going to move to the browser and show you how to actually make this on your happen on your website. Novel idea. So I'm going to close this, and I'm going to go to an example that I have already running in the browser. This example is doing nothing yet. It's just, all, the only thing it's doing so far is getting the image from the camera and has an empty canvas with nothing on it. So let's go look at the code for that. So I'm gonna go over here, we can see, oops, I'm in the index file by action. So here's the code. All I'm doing is I'm making a canvas. It's extra wide. I could make that as wide or as less wide as I want. By the way, I could do slit scan vertically. Might be something you think about as an exercise after this video. Um, I need to create the capture, which is creating the, the live stream connecting to the camera. You could also load a recorded video and see what happens with that. And I want to shrink it down just for demonstration purposes, but you know, you can make it as high resolution as you want, depending on how you know, fast your computer and browser is and that sort of thing. So, you know, ordinarily I might just do something like this. I might just draw the video itself in the canvas. And you can see if I run that, I get the video and I'm drawing it in the canvas. But I don't want to draw it in the canvas. What I want is just a single column of pixels. So how do I get a single column of pixels? Aha! <laughs> there is a function in the P5.js library called copy. I'm going to Google copy in P5.js. And we can see this function here. You can see some examples of what it's doing. And look at this. You can see this is like an example of using it. It's like copy image and then like eight different numbers. So this seems like an overly complex, weird thing. But the copy function is actually quite simple and perfect for exactly what we need to do. So I'm going to come over here and let's talk about that copy function, right? Copy. And then there were nine arguments. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I don't know if I got nine, but close enough. So the first argument is the thing you want to copy from. Right over here, you can see I want to copy from an image. For us, <laughs> come back over here, I want to copy from this video. So that's going to be the first argument, the video. Then, even though there are all these numbers there, it's actually quite simple. The next four numbers are the rectangle that you want to copy from. 
and the next four numbers represent the rectangle that you want to copy to. Meaning, I could potentially from this video say I want to copy this set of pixels, some partial set of pixels, and I want to copy them to the canvas, and I want to stretch them out or make them bigger. So you can do all sorts of interesting things with the copy function. But we're going to do something quite simple, which is I want this rectangle, right? A rectangle that starts from the center, the top left corner of that rectangle being the top center of the source image, and I want that rectangle to be one pixel wide and as high as the canvas itself. So let's go look at that. And I'm going to come back here into where? Into my code. And I'm going to say, and I'm going to com comment out drawing the video image. And I'm going to say, <laughs> copy. I want to copy the video from where? The center of the video, which is video.width divided by 2. Now, I'm going to put that in a separate variable just to make things a little bit more legible to read. So I'm going to say the center of the video and the top. And then I want how wide? I want one column of pixels, so it's a width of one. And I want it to be video.height, which I will also put in a separate variable. So that's what I want to copy. Now, where do I want to copy it to? Well, anywhere. I mean, there's all sorts of things I could do now. I could copy it to a random place. I could make it, I could stretch it out across the entire canvas. But really what I want to do is just copy it now to the left of the, that, that left column of the canvas, the very edge of the canvas. So where is that? The destination rectangle is just 0, 0. It's also a width of 1 and the same exact height. So if I run this now, whoops, come over here, we're going to see, ah, I have an error. Uncaught type error, cannot read property width of undefined. Oy vey, what am I going to do? This horrible red error, I have no idea. Act. So actually, I had this error earlier today. I spent like 20 minutes trying to figure out what it was. It's actually something quite simple, and I forgot. One thing that, I, that I'm doing here, which is a little bit different of how the code works in processing, is when I'm using the copy function, I'm accessing the pixels of that video image. And the pixels are not available to me by default. I've got to explicitly tell P5 that I want those pixels. So one thing that I need to add to this particular example is just say video.load pixels. And that should resolve this issue as long as I have video.load pixels there in draw. So we can, uh, we can zoom on in here and you can see there's that single column <laughs> of pixels. Can you see it? It's sort of hard to see. It's just one column, but as I move you see the colors are changing. So I kind of have that slit scan effect, right? I'm taking the center column of pixels, I'm copying it to the top left over here, but now what do I need to do? I need to copy here, then here, then here, then here, then here, move it across the canvas itself. So this is actually a really simple thing to do. All I need is to add one additional variable to this program. Then I need to say, instead of always copying it to the top left, that 0x value, just copy it to x. That's this particular, I'm sorry, that's this particular value in the copy function. I want to change that to x. And then I want to just say, hey, next frame, move x up by 1. So now always copy the same center column of pixels, but move the spot where you're copying it to. And now I'm going to run it again. And you can see, there it is. Oh, look, there, is, there are the pixels, there's that column. It's moving across. Now, interestingly enough, I'm not seeing that smearing effect. The reason I'm not seeing it is because I'm clearing the background every time. So this is a really easy thing to fix. I just need to move background back into setup for this particular example. I can hit refresh, and all of a sudden, boom, there's the slit scanning happening right now. And there it is as I move around and do my uh, breakdancing thing. So you, you, there's, there's some things that you might ask now. Number one is, why did the slit scan start over here? It should have started at zero. Well, the draw loop started before the camera kind of had initialized. So we could use a callback and make sure we wait till the first image comes. But that's something you could worry about. If you have a question about how to do that, ask in the comments. I'm glad to fix the example to do that. But that's sort of a minor detail. Another thing you notice is it's completely stopped because that x value just went off the side of the screen and kept going. So I think it would be useful to add something to this program like you know, uh, if x is greater than width, set x back equal to 0. And we'll see now, as x gets to the other side of the canvas, it will come back. So while we're waiting for that to happen, I'll mention a few things. You might be interested to try a vertical slit scan. What does that do? Another idea, I mentioned this in my other processing video, is a radial slit scan. What if you thought of like the hands on a clock 
uh, kind of twisting pixels around a circular path? What if you had, someone had made the comment, what if you had two columns of pixels coming towards each other? What if you like move them along a sine wave or you know, alternate it or put them in random locations? There's so many possibilities. What if, you're, what if your columns weren't one pixel wide but three pixels wide? You had horizontal and vertical. Maybe try to create your own variation on this idea. Share what you made, put a link in the comments. I would love to take a look at it. Another thing I would like to show you, which I think I'll do in a separate video, is how to actually store all of these columns, a history of them, so that you can kind of like cycle them around and get more of a time shifted feel to it. Um, this something more similar to, uh, I'll show you something I did in uh, this particular. So this is a very similar idea in that there's a kind of history of, of images, but instead of, uh, but I have the full image next to each other, what if I put these columns next to each other and have them kind of ripple in a different way? So I think maybe I'll try to add that in as a like addendum video. So uh, leave me your questions, leave me your comments, and subscribe, and I'll make more videos. That's just what's happening. Okay, bye, talk to you later.